Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to implement a guessing game. Two different versions. One, we're going to implement it on Java, which most developers are already familiar with. Another version, we're going to implement it on Haskell, running on Cardano Smart Contract. Alright, wait, wait, wait. Let's take a second and talk about how the gaming mechanic works. And let's put up a screen off the Java right there, and Pluto's right there. Player 1 gonna start the game and lock the money, and the game gonna generate a random number for them. Player 2 gonna try to guess that number, and if the guess is too low, we're gonna tell them to go higher. And if the guess is too high, we're gonna tell them to go lower. And if player 2 gets it correctly, we're gonna lock the money and give it to them. Um, in the description, I put down all the source code that you can grab. If you just want to see the Cardano implementation, you can just, you know, jump to somewhere. I'll put the link that you can skip to. We need to define the static main method in order to get the JVM to run a program. And we need to use the scanner in order to get the inputs from the console. So now let's ask our wallet one how much money they want to lock and start the game. We go going to use our scanner object in order to pull out the number that the wallet one enter into the console. As part of the locking, we're going to take that amount and subtract that from the wallet one balance. Now we're going to make this game go into this infinite loop and on every single loop, we're going to pause and ask player two or wallet two what is the amount they want to guess. All right, let's come back and finish our checking logic. So of course, if the guess is correct, we're going to unlock the money and give it to player two. And if the guess is too low, we're going to tell them that they should go higher. And lastly, if their guess is too high, we're going to tell them to go lower. Now I'm just doing a bit of spot checking before I compile and run this program. And you can probably guess that I made a mistake. <laughs> this is pretty typical. So let's go back and add a breakpoint when the person guessed correctly in order to break out from this infinite loop. Alright, let's give this game a test. On the start of the game, the secret number has already been picked out. So wallet 1 now just needs to decide how much money they want to lock. So here let's pick 6. Wallet 2 gonna try to guess that number. Of course, let's just randomly pick 100. It says to go lower. So now let's try 50. Oh, it's lower. Let's keep going down. So how about 25? Now we need to go higher. 40. Well, it's higher. Maybe 45. We need to still higher. 47. Now it's lower. Let's pick 46 and we got it. Yeah, that was a lot of code. Um, this is probably a good time to pause for a second and ask you to like this video so we know to make more of this type of content in the future. So just like a Java, we need a way to interact with the UI and we can do that through our game schema. And within the game schema, we can have our endpoints, and this is where we can tell our UI what to take as an input from the user. So now let's define our locking function. Uh, we need one really important thing, is to read the input from the user, and we're gonna read that from the endpoint. Specifically, we're gonna grab that from the lock params, and we need to define what the lock params would do. So the lock param is a data object, and we're only interested in one thing, is to grab the value of ADA that's going to be locked by wallet1 into the script. Now we should have enough information to wire up our game schema. We're going to have two endpoints, one for guess and one for lock. For the guess endpoint, we're going to read the input from the UIs and put that into the lock params. And for the guess endpoint, we don't care about that for now, so we're going to just ignore that with the unit type of nothing. All right, so now we're gonna get to the part where it might get a little bit confusing. In order to lock the money, we're gonna use something called the submit transaction constraint function, and it will take two inputs. The first one is gonna take the game instance or the script instance. The second input, we're gonna take the transaction constraints. So I thought the easiest way to just understand what's going on underneath the hood, and I just open up the Plutus GitHub and read their source code itself. You know, why not? It's open source, right? Let's get into it. Let's go to Plutus GitHub repository and search up the submit transaction constraints and jump into its definition. Um, here we can see that it will take two inputs, the script instance and the transaction constraints. We are going to call must pay to the script to build the transaction constraints object. And in there, as you can see, it's going to take two inputs. Um, it's going to take the random number that we're going to be sending to them and the amount of data that we are going to lock. And nothing is sent to the network yet. As you can see, it's just constructed transaction constraints object. 
All right, so now let's take the amount of ADA from wallet one and lock it into the game address by first building the constrained transaction object with must pay to the script function. We're gonna pass the random number. For now, we're just gonna use it one, two, three and the amount of ADA that we grab from the user interface. And we're gonna call the submit transaction constraint, pass it the game instance and the transaction. Game instance is an instance of the validator script. We just need to define what is the type of the datenum and the redeemer. The datenum is the value that we want to store into the script. Redeemer is the value that we're going to grab from the guest endpoint um, and compare to the datenum. If it is correct, we're going to unlock the money and give it to, for example, player 2. Let's compile a smart contract just to check if you have any error. <laughs> As you can expect, um, I got a bunch of syntax error. Let's fix them and test out our lock endpoint just to make sure that we can lock some money in there. And as you can see, six is gone. So now wallet one only have four. Let's define our guest endpoint and we're gonna be taking one integer pram input from the user interface. With that input, we can tell the user if they are guessing higher if they are we're going to tell them to go lower if they're guessing lower we need to tell them to go higher and if they're guessing the correct answer we're going to say congratulations you are going to get the fun in order to unlock the money we need to get the unspent output from the utxo of the game address and we need to create a constrained transaction from the unspent output and the guest parameter and finally we need to take those inputs and submit it to the submit transaction constraint spending by giving it the game instance which is the instance of the guest validator along with the unspent output and the transaction constraint. In Haskell a random number generator has a side effect so I want to avoid using it uh, so instead I'm just gonna grab the last byte of the wallet one address and pretend it is random and I like to have a magic number one two three in order to end the game early and we're gonna go ahead and finish off the validator guest if the guess value from the user matching either the random number or the magic number, we're gonna finish the game and unlock the money. A game address is just the address of the game instance, which is the instance of our validator. Let's compile a smart contract and fix any error that we might have. And I think this should be all. Um, let's give it a test together and see the final product. Wallet one gonna start off by locking six ADA and we're gonna wait for one block to pass and wallet two gonna guess 50 wait for another block wallet three gonna guess 200 wait for another block and finally we're gonna have wallet four guess 99 and let's evaluate it all right so now let's take a look at the result wallet four guessed correctly so it got an additional six ADA wallet two guessed 50 we told it to go higher wallet three guessed 200 we told it to go lower lastly wallet four guessed 99 which is the correct answer so if you have made it this far, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something out of this tutorial. Uh, just for fun, I have highlighted the last few bytes of the wallet one address. Can you tell me why is the correct answer? Tell us in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks a lot. I mean that from my heart because you make me feel good as a person. You know what I mean? Make me say, well, the shit wasn't that bad.